fact that there are these passages in the Bible where, and, and especially Isaiah, you know, it shows that the issue of nakedness is one of modesty. It's not one of commandment by God where it is a sin in and of itself to view or to show your nakedness. Now, what's interesting about this is that's why I believe the Bible associates nakedness with shame rather than nakedness with sin. Because like I said, shame, sin can lead to shame, but shame is not sin in and of itself. And this is an interesting fact. Um, I'll explain in a minute, because I believe this is how we can explain long hair on men. Because you know how, I'll show you this passage here, and I'll just end on this point. This is just a, a sort of an interesting addendum. <laughs> but in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 14, it talks about the covering of women and we know that the covering is talking about hair. It's not talking about what Muslims do. And you know, I've, I've, I've showed a Muslim verse 15 when they go about the covering and I don't know, they, I guess they, 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 they it took it out of their arsenal because they, they keep saying that even the Bible says that women should cover their hair. But it says here in, in verse 15, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her for her hair is given her for a covering. So the covering that the Bible is talking about is for a woman to have long hair. But verse 14, it says here, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Now, this verse is often used to teach that it's a sin for a man to long, have long hair. But is that what the Bible actually says? The Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. Now, is shameful necessarily sinful? Well, no, it's not. And this is how I think you can rightly understand this verse because people will often ask the question, well, if it's a sin for a man to have long hair, well, you've got to ask the question, well, how long is long as well, right? Like, is it just scruffy? Or is it like, you know, uh, down to your shoulders? They'll say, if, if, um, if it's a sin for a man to have long hair, well, what about Samson, mm -hmm. right? Because Samson was allowed to grow his hair out and he was commanded by the Lord to not cut his hair. Right? He had long hair. How long was it? Was his hair just scruffy? I mean, obviously, if he's growing up to adulthood, never growing his hair, he's got these seven huge locks. Because people might say, well, when you take a Nazarite vow, you're not necessarily growing your hair out to like how Stephanie's hair is. You know, you may just be growing it out and having it scruffy and having like an afro or something like that. So they'll say, oh, that's what the Nazarite vow is. But, but then you've got Samson. And then Sam is Samson just an exception where it's Right, well, we just brush it under the carpet. And don't, don't worry about that. It's still a sin for you to have long hair. But don't worry about Samson. Samson's just an exception. You know? It doesn't matter that God commanded him to have long hair. It's like Isaiah. It's a sin to show your nakedness. But don't worry about Isaiah. Just, just, just read over that bit. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter that God commanded him to be naked for three years. So I think a more sound position when it comes to long hair is it's, 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 it's a shame. It's not a sin. But the sin that's being described in Corinthians is if a man prays or prophesies with long hair. So if you have long hair as a man and you pray or prophesy, why is that a sin? Because you're dishonoring the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you have long hair and you're not praying or prophesying publicly, then you're not bringing any dishonor to Jesus Christ. And in fact, there are times where you may have long hair and it's when you take a Nazarite vow in the Old Testament. You would not cut your hair, you would not eat grapes, you would not drink wine, and you would then grow out your hair. Now this makes sense. If a Nazarite vow, the purpose of it, of growing out your hair and fasting, consecrating to your, to yourself to the Lord, is why? To humble yourself. To bring yourself down. You know, that's why we pray and fast. We humble ourselves before the Lord. And this is why it's a shame to have long hair. Because when a man has long hair, it's something that brings him down. Whereas when you cut your hair, you know, obviously when you go for an interview, you cut your hair, you're clean shaven, because you're trying to glorify yourself a bit, right? You're trying to bring yourself up. But when you get all scruffy, you let your hair all grow out like you're living in the wilderness, obviously that's humbling to you. It's shameful to you to, for a man to present himself like that. So if, I, if you put Elizabeth's hair on me, that's, that's a shame to me. I shouldn't, I shouldn't want to be seen in public like that. You know, it's something I should hide. But for a woman, it's the opposite, right? When a woman cuts her hair short, that is a shame to her. You know, the Bible wants women to grow their hair out. Their glory is their covering. Their glory is long hair. So when a woman has a crew cut, you know, shaves her hair down, the Bible says you may as well shave it all off because you're already shaming yourself by having short hair. You may as well do the, finish the job, you know, cut it all off and, and, and do its job. If you're going to shame yourself and cut your hair, shave it all off. Don't just have it short. Um, 
So that's interesting that shame does not always equal sinful. And this is how I believe we can understand this passage where it says, doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. So that makes sense with nakedness being corresponding to shame as well, that it brings somebody low. It's not necessarily a sinful thing to do. But next sermon, you know, I don't want to leave you with the, th I don't want to just leave you just sort of thinking, well, you know, it's all right for me to show my nakedness. You know, let's go to the beach and just hang it all out. Because there are other things obviously to consider that I haven't addressed in this, top, in this sermon. But I just think it's a sound position to realize that it's not sin because if it is, then you'll come to conclusions that are not right when it comes to medical reasons, emergency reasons, you know, family situations, you know, teaching reasons, things like that.